Hi, everyone. Welcome to your live streamed webinar for EFT Tapping for Weight Loss. I'm Carol Look. And as many of you know, I've been the host for all the videos you've been watching uh, for the Tapping for Weight Loss. So I'm glad you're here. We have a couple of things, just housekeeping. We need to talk about thank you to Cher and Leah doing our background work today. We need to talk about the disclaimer, which basically, as you all know, says take care of yourself. This is an experimental method. And yes, the research and science is coming out every single month more is coming out, but we need to, I need to read this to you. Disclaimer, emotional freedom techniques, EFT, and the term tapping will be used interchangeably as the name of the technique being taught in the master course, EFT tapping for weight loss. EFT is still considered experimental in nature, although it is rapidly gaining scientific support it is not yet widely accepted as a formally validated scientific technique, but we are so close. This educational master course, EFT Tapping for Weight Loss, is intended to promote awareness of the benefits of using and applying EFT tapping. However, all participants must take full responsibility for their use of it. This material is for your general knowledge only and is not a substitute for traditional medical attention, counseling, therapy, or advice from a qualified healthcare professional. One more paragraph there. <clears throat> Neither EFT tapping nor the information in this series is intended to be used to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or disorder. If you use the materials in this course and in the coaching that I'll tell you about, you agree to take full responsibility for your health and well being without holding anyone else responsible for the results you get. If you experience any unusual symptoms while using EFT tapping, it is recommended that you seek the advice of a qualified mental health professional. Although the results of the EFT research indicated that many people benefit from the, benefited from the use of EFT tapping, the responses to the technique are individual. A lack of result or progress may mean you need professional support and assistance. If you have any concern regarding your emotional health or mental state, it is recommended that you seek advice or treatment from a qualified, licensed healthcare professional. Thank you, Leah and Cher. Appreciate that. Welcome back, everyone. That's very important to read the disclaimer and have you all know that. Thank you for all your brilliant questions. This is awesome. So many people watch the videos and learn tapping for the first time. And some of you have been tapping for a long time, but never applied it to weight loss. So you have great questions, but there's a theme that came up in the question. So I want to address that first. Uh, so let's, we're basically setting the table here. You kept at, people kept asking, what tapping technique do I use for this problem? Cravings. What tapping technique do I use for plateaus? How do I address confidence? How, what tapping technique do I do here? And here's the bottom line. The tapping is a basic sequence and it's the same every time. Remember, we say, even though I have this problem, I accept myself anyway while we're tapping here. And then we tap on the points and take a deep breath and see how we're feeling afterwards. The target is what's important. Every single time, what we want to do is target the emotion, right? The blocking emotion. So it's not different for plateaus. It's not different for sabotage, right? If you're sabotaging, you want to ask yourself, hmm, what am I afraid of? Oh, I'm afraid of success. Oh, even though I'm afraid of success. If you have cravings, what are you afraid of? Nothing. I don't feel afraid. Okay. What is the feeling that might come up underneath a craving? Uh oh. If, you mean if I can't eat, oh, I'll be afraid of something or I'll feel my grief or I might feel out of control. That's your tapping target. Even though I'm afraid not to, to indulge my cravings because I might feel upset, I accept myself anyway. So repeatedly, at, uh, tons and tons of questions, but that's the theme came, that came up. What do I do differently for this? What do I do differently for this aspect? What if I'm frustrated and can't figure this out? get to the bottom line emotion. One of you, a couple of you said, how about, how do I stop the emotional overeating? Well, you don't stop the overeating until you address the emotions that make you want to go get extra food and use it as a numbing agent. Remember everybody, food works. Stop beating up on yourself. Food works to numb your feelings. So what we're going after and why this technique has been revolutionary in weight loss 
is because we are going after the very thing, the only thing that is making you reach for food when you really don't need any more. Have cravings, late night eating, early morning eating, excessive eating, emotional overeating. It's feelings, feelings, feelings. It's your emotions. So once we target whatever the emotion is, it could be guilt. It could be grief. It could be just stress. It could be anger. It could be hurt. It could be abandonment. Once we address those feelings with the tapping, even though I feel this fill in the blank, it's that simple, comma, I deeply and completely accept myself anyway. And once that process gets started, then you reduce the reasons you need to eat. You feel urgent and the need to overeat because you don't want to feel what's underneath there. Now, hundreds and thousands of you are just trying to numb a stressed situation, or you learned how to eat under stress when you were younger. Some of you have an acute issue around work, your partner, the kids, something. And what happens is if you learned how to use food at any age, food is very, very easy, then you'll resort to it. Now, some of you are drinkers and smokers, I assume. Same thing, right? If you learn at an early age that smoking, drinking, or eating soothes your emotional conflict, then you'll use it again, right? What happens? The habit builds up over the years. And before you know it, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds comes on. And you think, how did that happen? How did it happen? Is you were likely afraid, and that's appropriate, of touching the grief, of dealing with the, your parents' divorce, of addressing the boss who's so critical of dealing with moving at an early age in school, about dealing with body image, whatever it is, it scares you enough to say, you know what? I'd rather use food. Okay. So I hope that's really clear because it comes up in all the questions. Uh, so we are targeting the block. So I'll go through many of these and see, see if that makes sense to you. I hope it does already. Okay. So we're removing the emotional block because the target is the emotion. What's the target? The target is what we put into the phrase, even though I have this problem, right? I accept myself anyway. That starts to calm down the fight or flight response in the brain. If you are afraid of social settings, you will use food to numb it. If you're afraid of a family member, you will use food. If you're afraid of success, you will use food. If food is your number one, you know, I call it your drug of choice. All right. Uh, tapping techniques. How can I make my tapping more effective for weight loss? <laughs> Here's how you make it more effective. You make sure you're addressing the primary emotions that are running your life. What's running your life? Guilt, exhaustion, being a people pleaser, uh, being mad at people, having old resentments from old stuff, not feeling safe about your body, being exposed if you lose 30 pounds. Get to target what the real issue is. That's what. That's why the weight loss industry is a what cabillion dollar industry is because they keep addressing what's not really going on, which is food choices. Food choices, yes, we have to have good food choices. Of course we do. But you wouldn't choose all that awful food if you didn't have an urgency about calming yourself down. Struggling with emotions is our biggest problem. Human beings, biggest problem. Okay. So again, it kind of doesn't matter if it's food, alcohol, cigarettes, the internet, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever it is that you use. The point is when you understand and get to the bottom line, oh, I'm using food because I'm just stressed out. And it's the only time I feel calm. When you get that, when you figure that out and you make your links, when you connect the dots, then the sky's the limit. That's when you, the work can really start. And then you'll figure out what to do. Are there specific, here's an example. Are there specific points or sequences to focus on for weight loss? The sequence is what's driving you to overeat when you don't need more food repeatedly? Stress, guilt, hurt, abandonment, fear, lack of safety. What's the emotion? Then you put it in the phrase, even though I'm afraid to feel visible. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I'm afraid if I lose the weight, I'll be too visible and I'll get too much attention. I accept who I am anyway. Then we go, I'm afraid to be visible. 
keep it really simple. I've done it for 25 years, so I can't keep it simple when I work with people, but you can keep it simple. I'm afraid to feel exposed and vulnerable. I'm afraid to be visible, afraid to be visible. I don't want to feel exposed. So in the beginning of EFT and anybody who learns it for the first time, you can use the same phrase every single point. You could use the same phrase. It doesn't matter. But as you get more uh, experience with it, you'll start to tell a story a little bit more, right? So you can switch the words up, but do not hesitate to say, even though I'm totally stressed out by work and home and I feel it in my body and it makes me want to eat, I accept myself anyway, do that two or three times here. I'm totally stressed out. I can feel the stress in my body, totally stressed out. My stress is what's making me want to overeat. I know that. All the stress in my life, all the stress in my life, all the stress in my life. It's that simple, everybody. Which is why for years people thought, oh, it was a good technique to just take the edge off but they didn't realize how powerful it could be for making dramatic long-term changes. So as I said, I've been doing it for 25 years. I have made dramatic long-term changes in my life and in the lives of my clients as I teach them and lead them through finding the clear targets, figuring out what the real issue is. It is not the issue of food, okay? That's why the first module that you all uh, listened to and watched was it's not about the food. That was the, the, main, the main point of that one. Okay, emotional eating. How can I use EFT tapping to overcome emotional eating triggers? Your triggers are your feelings. Now you might say, yes, but it's a social situation. Yes, so what's the feeling you get when you think of going to a social situation, a work party, a home party, something social? What comes up in you, it's likely stress, anxiety, or worry. Then you plug it in, right? Even though I feel stressed out when I think of going to that gathering, comma, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. You can say love and accept myself, accept myself fully, respect and accept myself. The point is the sentence is split into two for the brain. Even though I have this problem, I'm okay anyway. Very, very important. And they've been using that for, I don't know, the 35 years of tapping, 40 years of tapping. And it works. Okay. Don't change it up if you don't want to, because it works. What tapping methods? Here's what I mean about the questions. What tapping methods can help me address my cravings? It's not, a, it's not methods plural. It is one method. Even though I have intense cravings because I don't want to feel my feelings, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have intense cravings when I have a work project, I accept myself anyway right? So it's not tapping methods. It's the same thing. Even though I have this fear, stress, worry, concern, I accept myself anyway. Even though I still have cravings late at night, I accept myself anyway. Okay. Very important because this will simplify it for many of you who are making it a little complicated. And please trust me, I did too in the beginning. Don't make it complicated. It's that simple. What we're doing is addressing the fight or flight response in the brain, we're calming it down, okay? And when it's calmed down, you no longer need the behavior that you've been using, okay? If you don't calm down the stress response in your brain and your body, you don't have a choice because you've now been habituated to using food, using a substance to, to be quiet, okay? We're trying to quiet what's inside, what's making us restless and upset and hurt. And as I say, it could be anger at your spouse. It could be frustration with your boss. It could be memories of getting too much attention when you were thin, when you were younger. It can be a little bit of anything, right? I want you to understand, even if it sounds weird to you and you think, that's so strange. I don't think that's my issue. If you're thinking about it, it's your issue. So think of visibility, safety, attention, fear, okay, grief, hurt. A couple of you asked about grief. I'll get to that. I hope it's at the end there. Uh, motivation and willpower. How can I tap to boost my motivation and willpower for weight loss? So this is important. You need to get behind it. Why don't you have willpower and motivation for weight loss? See, many people come to me and come to the workshops and say, I've wanted to lose weight for 30 years and I can't do it. Do you really want to? I do. 
What part of you doesn't want to? What part of you, every single person watching this live stream, you have a part of you that's conflicted. You have a part of you that's like, yeah, it would be nice to lose weight. And I've tried for 25 years, but I'm also afraid. If you didn't have a conflict, you would do it. If you did not have conflicting emotions, fears, like, uh-oh, what's going to happen when I get there? What's going to happen when I finally lose the 30 pounds? Um, if you didn't have conflicting emotions, you'd already be there. I promise you, if you are sabotaging yourself, finding that you're going up and down, yo-yo dieting, not getting to your goal, what I can promise you as a clinician who's been working in this field for 25 years, doing tapping for 25 years, um, what I can promise you is there's a reason. There's a good reason. And I know some of you are going to say, it's not a good reason. I hate myself for it. Stop hating yourself and say, well, why would I be afraid to lose it? I say I want to every week, every year, I make a new pledge. Why am I conflicted? It's a really good question. So sometimes the way we find the good targets is to ask the right questions. Why am I conflicted about losing weight when I talk about it and have talked about it for decades? Okay, very, very important. Uh, da, 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 stay consistent. What strategies can I use to stay consistent with tapping and, and healthy habits? So here's the strategy I use. I do tapping every single day, even if I've, even if I've done a three-day workshop for people, for participants and taught it, I have to do my own tapping every day. This is rain or shine. I don't care what country I'm in. I took an 18-hour flight to Australia. I did my tapping every single day. Why? Because if you really want to get to your goal, now, in my case, I'm not losing weight anymore. I don't have to do that. But my stress relief, my work issue, everything else is my family issues. I need to do tapping every day. So do you. Now, why would I say that without knowing you? Because tapping is the best technique I have found in all my years as a psychotherapist to calm us down, make us get clear headed, give us access to our smarts and our brilliance and our genius that we have about all sorts of problems and lets us stop behaving in a way that then we feel ashamed of, right? So you feel upset, you use food, you overuse it, you eat too much, you gain weight, and then you feel ashamed. Then what do you do? You feel ashamed and you use food because you feel ashamed. And this is the cycle. So you don't need to, I'm not telling you what to do. You're going to do whatever you want, but I recommend putting 10 minutes, 15 minutes in a day. Don't do two hours of tapping. First of all, you don't have time to do two hours of tapping. You don't need to do two hours of tapping. We are calming down the fight or flight stress response, fight, flight, or freeze stress response that happens in the brain when you think of something upsetting. Your boss, your spouse, the dog, your kids, work, what happened 10 years ago, a fight you're having with your sister, whatever it is, that triggers you to go, ah, uh oh, ah, and get fearful and sends cortisol through your system. And what we're doing is saying, when you think about that issue, Calm yourself down. And that's all it takes. We are pairing your fear of something with a technique that calms down literally what happens in the brain. So we're calming down what happens in the brain and the body, right? Because you all know about the vagus nerve, right? The nerves in the body and our nervous system, it is not just in the brain, right? It's all, it's all over us, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> How can EFT tapping help improve my body image and self-acceptance? First of all, when you use EFT for a little while, you'll start to feel that acceptance. Even though I have this problem, this challenge, this conflict, use what language you want. If you don't like the word problem, that's okay. I accept myself anyway. So that's going to start to build for you is that self-acceptance. Um, over Help improve body image. Remember, what are we targeting? We're targeting the challenge, targeting the block, targeting the emotional feeling. How do you feel about your body? I hate it. I don't like it. I'm embarrassed by it. Get to the real feelings, plug that into your tapping. I hope this is, I want to repeat that so you all get how simple it is and also how, oh, this is why a technique so, that's so simple can be used for every single part of weight loss. That, that's why it's so brilliant, okay? Now, you can use it for every single part of other things, success issues, relationship issues, but tonight is what we're talking about. 
Uh, overcoming plateaus, same thing. How can I use tapping to break through weight loss plateaus? Well, what's a plateau? It's a very frustrating point in your weight loss journey where suddenly, not so suddenly, the scale doesn't move or the scale stops moving, okay? So what would you target? If you targeted, even though I'm on a plateau, it's a little vague, it's a little left brainy. What we wanna target is how do you feel about it, okay? even though I feel irritated and frustrated that I hit another plateau and I'm thinking of overeating, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm so frustrated, I have this plateau and I can't believe it, I accept myself anyway. I'm so frustrated by the plateau. You see the theme of getting to the emotion. I am so frustrated by this plateau, okay? What's the other reason that we would be tapping on a plateau? We wanna find out what you're afraid of. Many of you will say, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm just frustrated with a plateau. If you're hitting an unreasonable plateau, I believe your body and mind unconsciously is afraid to go further. Now, some people just say, hey, I'm going to deal with it for a couple of weeks. I'm going to just be calm about it, understand it's part of the process. Others of you, if you tap on the deeper fear, ask yourself this question. Why am I afraid to lose the weight? Now you'll get an instant reaction that says, I'm not, no, no. no. Why, am, why would I be afraid to reach the goal that I've been working on for decades? What's the reason? What are you honestly afraid of? When you target that, your plateau will shift also. Okay, very good questions and very, very important. So here's how the questions are worded that I wanna clarify for you. Are there specific techniques to overcome resistance when the scale isn't moving? Yes, there's one technique. You tap on the frustration about the scale not moving and why you might be afraid to let yourself lose more weight and have the scale move, right? Emotions, emotions, emotions. So there's not a technique. There's a fill in the blank. Even though I'm frustrated that the scale won't move again, I accept myself anyway. This is where I am. Even though I'm really scared that it won't start moving, I accept myself anyway. Or what are we seeing? Evidence that you have a real fear of reaching your goal in spite of all your talk about wanting to reach the goal. When we have blocks, a bunch of you asked about sabotage. When you're sabotaging yourself, I love it. When love it, meaning I, I like the information because it means <clears throat> there is a part of you that is doubtful. There's a part of you that's saying, yeah, that's a good idea. And I say, I wanna lose the weight, but honestly, I'm afraid. That's all, you just have to ask yourself more questions. Do it in a safe environment, quietly in your journal with a friend, with a counselor, and just say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not sticking to it. So that must mean that I have a conflict. That's what it does mean, I'm telling you. With all my experience, that's what it does mean, okay? <clears throat> specific okay uh hope that's clear resistance so you use the word, a couple of you use the word resistance you can also tap on even though i'm frustrated by my resistance or even though i feel resistant to sticking to my healthy food plan you can do that a uh, couple of questions about exercise too even though i just keep sabotaging my exercise program i accept myself anyway i keep sabotaging i must be afraid if you did nothing else but tapped for 10 minutes on underlying stress and fear, I'm telling you, you would open the door, okay? Open the door to success with your goals. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> Post-tapping maintenance. What can I do to maintain my progress after achieving my weight loss goals? Uh, same thing. We live in very complicated lives. I'm sure all of you watching have complications. Uh, people, uh, families, uh, animals, jobs, issues, um, we all do. And what you want to do is keep targeting the stress that comes up in your life. So you can reach your goal weight and then go, uh, yeah, and my boss is still a jerk. <laughs> and I'm still having marital problems and I'm still having issues with the teenagers right? With your own teenagers. So that can be an issue, just life. Stress that comes up that makes you want to go, oh, I want to reach for that food again. I love the sugar calms me down. Okay. Very important. Um, are there specific tapping routines for weight maintenance? No. The routine is 
even though the stress is making me want to start eating again, right? Stress and fear, stress and fear, stress and fear. Okay. So weight maintenance is about how do you feel comfortable and safe having reached your goal? If some of you think, oh, that word safe is getting to me. I don't feel safe. Why not? I feel exposed. Why not? I might get attention. You know, why else don't you feel safe? I don't know. I feel a little exposed <clears throat> by suddenly, not suddenly, but not being, not having the extra 20, 30, 40 pounds on you. If you feel exposed, that's what you tap on. Even though I feel vulnerable and exposed at this smaller size, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Um, a bunch of you asked about uh, sugar cravings and your addiction to sweets. Same thing. You have sugar cravings that are blotting out your, your uh, regular thinking, right? You have a craving and you go, oh, I must need that bag of cookies. No, you've got stress, fear, complications, complexities in your life going on that make you think unconsciously, oh, wouldn't it be nice to blot this out and numb myself? Okay, so it's the same process. Even though I'm quite anxious and reaching for sugar, I accept myself anyway. Even though I'm really stressed out and I think sugar will make, make me feel better. Now, here's a tip that I want to say to you. Do not wait until you are on your way to Dunkin' Donuts to start tapping because you won't do it. If you've gotten that far that you're in the car and you're going to your favorite local bakery or whatever, you won't do it. Okay. Tap every day, five, 10, 15 minutes. You can tap five minutes before every meal, and that'll just make you eat in a slow, healthy, mindful way. Really, really incredible. But if you wait too long, can, the train has left the station. So that's an important tip that I found out the hard way. <clears throat> so cravings and sugar cravings. Same thing for unhealthy snacks. Um, here's an interesting question. Some of you said, can tapping help with reducing thigh or arm fat? I don't know. I don't think so. Because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And I would try it as an experiment. What you'd have to do first is even though I hate my arm fat, even though I'm trying to get rid of it, I accept myself anyway, You'd need to do that first or else you're caught in a resistance trap, right? So you'd need to be self-accepting first and then see what happens. It's always been a problem with people losing weight, the spot reducing. So um, I've not done that successfully. I've not tried it, but I have not done that successfully. I would say try it. Uh, honestly, try it. But it has not been shown to do that, okay? Tapping and grief. How can I use EFT tapping to heal emotional wounds related to weight loss? Now, I'm not sure what you mean. Emotional wounds related to weight loss. There are emotional wounds that we eat over. There are emotional wounds that can happen after you've lost the weight. I have plenty of clients who they've lost the weight and someone criticizes them. Someone pokes fun at them. Someone says, oh, now you're too serious because you think you're so successful really emotional wounds. So there's after the fact weight loss. I'm not sure. I think you mean the emotional wounds that would make you want to overeat. I think that's what you mean. So how do you use EFT tapping for that? Target the emotional wound. Even though I remember the time she, he humiliated me in public, I deeply and completely accept myself. Maybe your teacher humiliated you in sixth grade. Humiliation. We don't want to be exposed if we've been humiliated once in our lives. Okay. Very, very important. Grief. What tapping strategies can I use to address grief and emotional eating simultaneously? If you address your grief, you are addressing emotional overeating simultaneously. That's the key, everybody. If you are addressing your emotional conflicts, you will be addressing the reason you emotionally overeat. I cannot say that enough times tonight. Okay. Good, good. Excellent, excellent questions, everybody. Um, building healthy habits. How can I use tapping to establish a consistent exercise routine? I addressed that a little bit before. What's the block to having a consistent exercise routine? Do you resent it? Are you rebelling? Uh, do you feel trapped by it? Do you feel lazy? What's going on? And then you would do it as we've been doing. Even though 
I resent that I have to get up and exercise in the morning. We're just, you're getting the themes. I hope it's, we're just talking about real life, but nobody's talking about our feelings, right? We've been taught not to, and they build up and build up. And then we feel resentful. And then we feel rebellious. Some of you are going to need to do the rebellion one, even though I feel rebellious and don't make me do it. And of course, when we're put on a food plan, right, we feel like someone's trying to control us. No one's trying to control you. You control you. Okay. This is your life, your weight, your body. You do what you want. But if you want to lose the weight and reach that goal, please use this technique. Time management, prioritizing. How can I find time to incorporate tapping, checking the time here, into my busy schedule? How do you find time? Here's what I would say. <laughs> I don't have a choice for stress relief to do my tapping. I need to do that every day. I also need to do my speed walking. I, you know, I do a couple of things every day. I would say it's not a, I would say, what's a comfortable time for you? Morning, noon, or evening? Five minutes before each meal, or do you need to do 10 to 15 minutes and get it done with? targeting stress about anything in your life, okay? Then you sit down in a quiet space where the kids can't get you, the dog doesn't bark, your phone isn't ringing, and you really pay attention to yourself and the targets. Take some notes. What do I need to tap on today? Hmm, I'm not really sure. I don't really feel much. Most people feel something and feel emotions that are troubling about work. It's always, what is it always about, everybody? Work, home, and our health. <laughs> Relationships at work and at home, and our health and our bodies. So choose a couple of those. So incorporate it, I would say, you wanna look at the resistance. Why wouldn't you incorporate a technique that has now years and years of research behind it? Uh, <clears throat> why wouldn't you incorporate a technique that works? What's the evidence, right? What is it evidence of? It is evidence that you have a conflict that you might be conflicted about actually reaching that goal that you've been talking about, right? Always go back to that, huh, I'm not sticking to my tapping routine. I, I, I don't get to it. Life got too busy. Really? Life can't be too busy for you to take care of yourself. Now, I know that millions of us learned not to take care of ourselves. And honestly, that is our habit. Put others first, not take care of ourselves. It's time to change that. You want to change your body? You want to change your health? You got to start putting yourself first. And I'm recommending and inviting you to do not 45 minutes of tapping a day, but 10 to 15 minutes of tapping a day. I know you're busy. I know some of you are three times, four times as busy as I am. Do it. Please put it on the calendar, write it in your calendar, choose a time every day in the morning, say, now what time am I going to do my tapping? Because the tool can be the best tool. So the best tool I found in 30 years just in mental health. The tool can be the best tool ever, but if you don't do it, it won't help you, right? If you don't work it, it won't work for you. Um, so really, really important. Uh, prioritize. How do you prioritize other things? Why do you get other things done, right? I feel good after my tapping. I've been tapping for years. I feel good after my tapping. Now, one of the things, just as a side note, uh, some of you who've seen me lecture before, you know that the very first thing that I healed on myself with tapping, and I wasn't even targeting it, but I was targeting anxiety, was my long-term insomnia. You want to change your health issues? Start sleeping better. You want to change your desires for eating unhealthy foods? Sleep better. We need to sleep more deeply. And the tapping right, reduces your anxiety. You're already physically tired at night, but what's going on? You got monkey mind, right? tap, 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 either at night or during the day. What I did is I was tapping with clients. It was brand new to me. And I was just tapping with clients' anxiety. And one day I went, I think I slept a nice full night. I got a full night's sleep last night. Very, very important. Sleep is connected to our health and sleep is connected to weight loss. And you all know that. I'm sure you've seen the articles in the last 20 years about that. All right. Um, some of you uh, managing weight gain during menopause. We have an assumption that that has to happen. Yes, hormones change when women go through menopause, but I would keep addressing the frustration, the feelings, and this belief that you're convinced people, everybody gains weight during menopause. Not everybody does, but that's what you see in the news and you, your friends and your neighbors, right? So tap on the frustration of it and tap on the feelings underneath that. 
Are you eating more because your hormones have changed? You want to change the emotions so that you're calmer. Every day that you're calmer, you need to use less food, less, fewer crutches, right? You don't need to use whatever you use, right? Very important. All right. Um, how can I find a qualified EFT practitioner for personalized waste loss control? Okay, I'm going to have a page on my website and I'm going to have about six or seven top practitioners and I'm getting to that. Um, you can look them up if you want to. Make sure you ask them, how long have you been tapping? How long have you been tapping? Have you been using it for weight loss? It's important because weight, everybody thinks they know how to do it for weight loss. It's like trauma. Now everybody wants to do tapping for trauma. It works for trauma, but not everybody knows how to address trauma. Okay, so very important. Um, what are the benefits of working with an EFT coach or therapist? You know, it's hard to be it's hard to be your own doctor is basically what it is. So I, of course, recommend counseling and coaching and getting help and peer groups and all of that because we we don't want to see our own problems sometimes. We're blind to them, and that's human nature. That doesn't make you bad or in denial. It makes you appropriately scared, maybe of the truth afraid of what you're not seeing. So getting a second pair of eyes and ears is always helpful, but try it on your own. You may do really, I've had so many people who did beautifully and made progress, exceptional progress on their own. Why? Because they stuck to it. They said, this tapping thing is a little weird, but I think it works. I know it works, okay? Now we did tapping for weight loss. I wrote an initial um, article on weight loss for tapping to, uh, for the head guy for his huge website 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And he said, huh, we've done it for cravings, but not for the whole weight loss journey. And it was a turning point. He said, I didn't even know that we could do that. Well, yeah, we can do that because tapping addresses the stress, the overeating, the frustration, frustration at plateaus, the, I don't feel safe, the yo-yo dieting, the, I don't want the attention, right? I resent that I have to be on a healthy food plan. Tapping addresses every angle. That's why it's so profound. So yes, you could start just using it for cravings. You'll find a lot of difference. A lot of things will change for you. Now, <clears throat> when the craving goes away and you put down the sugar, guess what might come up? The grief, the hurt, the abandonment, the betrayal. So that's why you want to target those feelings. Do you have a place in your life where you were betrayed? The boss said you were doing a great job and a month later you got a pink slip? a spouse, a parent, a friend in day, high school? Do you have a place where you were betrayed? That's a great tapping target. Um, binge eating, binge eating episodes, same thing. You right? How can I use tapping to overcome binge eating? What you need to do is understand first and be kind to yourself. It's not normal to binge eat right? It comes from, it's being fueled by stress, anxiety, self-hatred. I don't want to feel. So once you know that, it's like, oh, I'm not loopy here. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to feel the feelings. And when I binge eat, I don't have to feel them. Now, those of you with complex childhood trauma, I highly recommend that you see a practitioner. You need help. You need extra help because you won't want to see the trauma, right? If, been, if your binge eating is connected to that. But the same thing, you're binging desperately so that you don't have to feel. And it may take a while to get behind the layers. Stick with it, okay? Um, sabotage, okay, this is my favorite. I love, I love working with sabotage in any field. How can I tap to overcome self-sabotaging behaviors in my weight loss journey? Here's the question, everybody. What's the upside to sabotaging? And you will say, Carol, don't be silly. There's no upside. I don't want to sabotage. That's a stupid thing to ask. Yes, there is an upside. You do not need to sabotage yourself unless it serves a purpose. Take that in. You will never sabotage yourself unless you feel unsafe reaching your goal. Sabotage is solving a problem. What's the problem? Oh, I don't want to lose the last 10. I'm afraid of the attention. I'm afraid someone's going to mock me. I'm afraid I'm making it up, but you know, I've gotten all these answers from clients. So sabotage is for a reason. If you write that down and ask yourself, what is the upside of sabotaging my weight loss journey and keep at it until you get an answer? Uh, some people will say to me, uh, that question changed my life. 
that question changed my life. When I figured out that sabotage, I was a big procrastinator and rebellion. I had all the reasons for uh, sabotage. Um, and I figured that out, that I was doing sabotage for a good reason. I was trying to protect myself from something. Whoa, did everything change? We're all trying to be safe. What are you protecting yourself from? Attention, criticism, jealousy, right? Visibility. And some of it will go back to childhood for you. How are we doing on time here? Oh, we're doing great because I talk so fast. Uh, body confidence. We've talked about that. Um, the specific tapping script. So again, it's not the script. It's targeting why you don't have body confidence or self. A couple of you asked about self-esteem. You want to target the conflict. Why don't you have body con confidence? Because I feel terrible, because I feel fat, because I feel bigger than my friends. And I find out what it is, then target the emotion. Now, other targets, so emotion, best target ever, 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 right? There's also targeting memories of an event. The time my friend made fun of me because I couldn't fit in my clothes, okay? The feelings come up, you go tap, 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 okay? Even though I remember being humiliated or hurt or upset or pointed out or made fun of, right? So target the conflict. Why don't you have body confidence? Because I don't think I look as good as other people. Where did you get that? Well, I don't know. You got it somewhere. Even though someone criticized my body 23 years ago, and I remember how much it hurt, I accept myself anyway. You, you don't come out this way. You have to learn how to hate yourself. You have to learn to compare your body with others. Yes, we can talk about the news and advertising and all that. But how do you think we learn? We learn by watching. We learn by hearing. So very, very important. Um, stress reduction. How can I tap to reduce stress and cortisol levers, levels that may hinder weight loss? Cortisol levels always hinder weight loss. They signal to your body that you're not safe and you're in, whoa, scary mode, fight or flight, got to protect myself, got to have eyes in the back of my head. And what you need to do is use tapping for stress relief. Again, I said this earlier, if any of you are just joining, if you did nothing else but tap on stress relief 10 minutes a day, okay, you would start to feel the difference in your calmness, in your presence, in your mindfulness, in your relationships. You won't be as reactive anymore in your key relationships. You won't be as irritated at the boss. You'll see things as not as personal as you used to take them, personally as you used to take them. Very, very important. So tapping for stress reduction, even though I feel stressed out about fill in the blank, even though I feel stressed out when I think of the project that's due, even though I feel stressed out when I think of the holidays coming or whatever it is. Realistic expectations. How long is it, does it typically take to see noticeable results with EFT tapping for weight loss? You will notice an emotional result first, then right away your eating will change, then the weight comes off. But we still have math, right? We still need to do the math. You, Someone asked how soon, uh, something else about how many pounds. Um, you're not going to lose five pounds in a week. And I don't want you to lose five pounds in a week because that's unhealthy for the human body. So think of this, I'm going to reduce my stress and anxiety first. That's going to change my behavior. And then I'm going to get the results. Please keep thinking about that. I can't get the results till I change my behavior. And I won't change my behavior. So I'm going backwards, right? I won't change my behavior until I reduce that stress and anxiety that makes me reach for, fill in the blank, the unhealthy foods. Okay. So target stress relief every single day. That's what I do. Okay. Um, tapping for maintenance during travel. How can I continue my tapping routine while I'm traveling and around uh, expensive foods? You know what I mean by expensive? Um, <clears throat> I think if you don't have a routine of tapping, it falls off the list. Uh, that's what I know. If I don't have a routine of my walking or my gratitude list, falls off falls off my to-do list. And I know some of you will say, uh, if you knew how busy I was, I can't put something else in. You know what? You're going to have to take something else out. Then, you know, you don't have to watch as much TV. You don't have to be on Facebook as much. You don't have to do something as much. This is 
your health we're talking about. This is your life. This is your happiness we're talking about. I want you to feel inspired to do a technique that feels good and that will make you feel better. So when you're not doing something that you know could make you feel better, remember, what is that evidence of? Fear and the sabotage? Fear. It's evidence of fear. I don't want to feel better. Why wouldn't you want to feel better? Because I'm scared. What are you scared of? I'm scared of being of people being jealous. Really? What does that go back to? When I was in fifth grade, I won a prize and someone made fun of me. Right? We're looking for the evidence that you're afraid because fear runs 100% of human beings. Sometimes we call it something else, but it's all about fear. And once we can calm that down, everything changes. So I want to go back to the sequence I was saying. When you reduce your anxiety and stress, your behavior naturally changes. Now we're talking about the behavior of overeating, emotionally overeating. Your behavior might be being too quick to react to somebody, too quick to feel resentment and a personal, somebody's out to get me. Your behavior may mean staying up too late, watching TV and not getting a good night's sleep and then sabotaging yourself at work. Change your anxiety and stress levels. That will naturally lead to changing your behavior and changing your behavior will naturally get you different results. You, it, you, you have to have all those pieces there, but it happens, right? You don't, you don't get bad results when you change your behavior and change your stress, right? So really, so I was addressing this maintenance during travel. If you don't have a routine, you won't do it. So I absolutely make sure I have a little clue. I think I said it in one of the modules, maybe. Um, if I haven't done my tapping, if I haven't finished my tapping yet, I keep a, a certain a watch band on. And when I go to bed, sometimes I go to bed at night, 10 o'clock at night, and I go, oh, shoot, I haven't finished my tapping for the day or I haven't done it for the day. Find a way to put it in your planner, put it on your to-do list, put it in every morning or night. I do it at different times of day because there isn't one time of day, oh, if I get my tapping done at 9 a.m., I feel better or that works for me. That actually doesn't work for me. Some of you <clears throat> like to have scheduling that way and it works for you. There's no right way. There's a, there, the only right way to do tapping is to do your tapping, okay? Do it every day, every day. So same thing about your question. A couple of you travel a lot for business. How do I continue my tapping routine? Even if you're in a hotel across the country, let's say, you sit down and you say, hmm, I haven't done my tapping for the day, but it's got to be on a list somewhere until you feel comfortable doing it as part of your life. Like I would never miss it now because it's such a part of my life. But in the beginning, I was like, oh, I didn't do my tapping, right? I haven't been doing tapping every day for 25 years. I was working on clients, doing workshops, working more on it, trying it on myself. But I developed the routine of doing it every single day. I don't know how many years ago, 10, 15? Le probably less than 15, but certainly more than 10. So get it on your schedule. Uh, make yourself a priority. This is really about self-care. And okay, you might fall off the wagon. Can we just address that for a little bit before I need to tell you something about what other options are? What if you fall off the wagon and you don't do your tapping for three days? So what? <laughs> get back on the wagon. More people have sabotaged their I hate the word diet, you know that, right? From watching the modules. More people have sabotaged their healthy eating plans and their exercise routines because they fell off the wagon, they stopped doing what they were supposed to do for two days or three days, and they say, well, that's it. All righty, can't get back on. Well, guess what that is evidence of? Fear. It's evidence of too much stress. It's evidence of, hmm, um, hmm how can I sabotage my weight loss journey? Why? Because you're scared of something. 100% of you and I, we are scared of something. What? Success? Having a smaller body? Getting attention? Finally not beating ourselves up over this issue? What are you scared of? The grief that I never dealt with when I was 10, 15, 20? Anger, hurt? What are you afraid of? Really, 100% of human beings are often run by some form of fear, small or large. So what we wanna do is get to it, tap, 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 get to it. And over the days and weeks, some of you are gonna notice in days, like 
uh, 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 this is different. And it's, it's going to rock your boat a little. And when we change and we're more successful, don't think it doesn't rock other people's boats. Don't think that your friends or siblings or family members who have serious weight problems and haven't found a technique, they're going to ask you some questions and they might be upset. And that's okay, but you got to be ready for that. That, that could happen, right? So get, <clears throat> I covered as many questions as I possibly could. Your questions were awesome. Get it on a, in a schedule, get it as a routine, do your tapping every single day. And if you fall off the wagon for three days, get back on. Okay. Same thing if you overeat for the weekend. Who cares? Oh, but I overeat for the week. Three days, really. Get back on. If you're committed and inspired, you will get back on. If you're too afraid, you'll throw in the towel. You'll say, oh, well, that happened. So I, I guess I'm not going to do it this time. Why not? What would you be afraid of? Okay. <laughs> we covered a lot of ground, everybody. I hope it's clear. Choose a target. The target's always a feeling. Tap on the emotion or the feeling, and I deeply and completely accept myself, and then tap on all the points for the feelings. Uh, Cher and Leah, are we ready to show this? There we go. Thanks, you guys. My support in the background here. Uh, couldn't do it without them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of ways that you can go deeper. I know some of you have already bought it, but it's really, really important. So the master course, many of you on this already have the master course, and wow, is it chock full. Totally chock full. They've got the modules, the bonus unaired modules. Those are really fun to do. Uh, the transcripts and audio recordings. You can go over and over. You don't have to come up with anything new. You could go over and over the material because enough of it is absolutely critical. And you could make changes in your life without ever coming up with your own words. Really, really important. Uh, the Breakthrough Weight Loss Technique book and the Action Guide book. And the you get a bonus pass. Uh, VIP buddy pass. Really? That's fabulous. The team put this together, right? I'm happy that they did, but wow. Okay. 97 bucks. So this, these are ways that you can go deeper with it. I don't want you just to skim the surface. This is not a weight loss and tapping. It's not a skim the surface issue. This is for some of you, this has been a lifelong issue. Some of you, you've only been overweight for 10 years. Most people have been overweight and tried absolutely everything. So this is how to go deeper. The EFT tapping coaching and implementation. Ooh, we got the kickoff call is next week. So you get seven coaching calls live with me and they will be recorded. Um, and what we're doing the entire time is tapping. I'll take one person, five minute turns, very short. What's your issue? What's your emotion? Tap, tap, tap. Everybody taps along. Next person. What's your issue? What's your emotion? Tap, tap, tap. Everybody gets something from other people tapping. They found this out in their research. Uh, they found it out in uh, doing groups, large groups of tapping, that even if you don't have the same issue, something happens as you're tapping on the other person's issue. Fascinating. They've been doing that for 30 years. So you get the seven live coaching calls with me, um, the 11-week implementation program workbook. Boy, do we work hard on that. Video and audio replays of all the coaching calls. I said that. 15 core tapping scripts with video and audio, 11 bonus tapping scripts. So I provide, I went through and wrote out what I think are the most important, most prevalent problems that get in our way and lifetime access to everything. That's 197. Okay. The third option is you don't get the live coaching calls, but you get all the other stuff. So you get the implementation program workbook without the live coaching calls. I know some of you are going to say one of the calls. So next week we have a, a kickoff call and that is on, uh, that's on Tuesday. Uh, they are 12 noon, two in July, two in August and two in September. Okay, 12 noon and they're recorded. But next Tuesday is a kickoff call that's really fun for everybody who signs up. So these are three ways that you can go further and keep taking the tapping <clears throat> into your life, incorporate it and really really understand it. Okay. Uh, again, many of you have already bought the master course and I thank you very much. Uh, boy, did we have a good time putting it together because I feel passionate about this work. I've been helped by tapping, changed my life. So as a counselor and therapist and coach, I want to change other people's life. I want to help you be able to take that control. Okay. My problem was always anxiety and stress, always anxiety and stress. I use cigarettes. I use food, right? 
Um, so tapping for weight loss master course, many of you already have that and thank you. That's here, has all that list here. The coaching and implementation, that's the big, the big package, okay, in the middle here, 197. That's the big package, but a lot happens on the live tapping. And I've done these series for years where people say, well, I couldn't be there live because of my job or something happened or I live in a different country and the time didn't work. And they listen to the replay and they would say, I don't get it, but I changed because I was watching and listening to the replay and tapping along, but I wasn't there live. Tapping and watching people tap and tapping along with other people calms down the fight or flight response, right? You know about mirror neurons. So you're watching other people tap and you're tapping on yourself and you're listening to them and you're processing. We have not processed all the things that have happened in our life. Sorry, every 100% of human beings are not processing enough, which is why I'm so committed myself to my own practice of tapping and techniques that I use um, to calm myself down because life keeps happening, right? So that's the big one. And then of the implementation program, if you don't want to do the, if it's too much for you to do the bigger priced item with all the live coaching calls, get the implementation workbook. That's really, really important. Lots of extra materials, questionnaires, write down, taking notes, try this, do this, really, really supportive and helpful. You get the digital and the printed workbook, the 15 tapping scripts with video and audio, the 11 bonus tapping scripts, and lifetime access to everything. So there's three options. Um, I want you to really think about it and go, huh, would this be helpful? Could I benefit from this? She's saying it's working. It's not only working, it's been working. I guess they've been doing tapping since the 80s. Okay. So 43 years, I think it was discovered in the early 80s, maybe late 70s, they were starting to play around with it. So, and I've been doing it for 25 years. It is a phenomenal technique, which is why it's been taking off in the last decade. And then the research has come out. It works. There's no question. Nobody could argue about with me about whether it works or not. Are you going to work it? Are you going to use it? Do you want to use it? Do you really, you know, do, do you want to get through your conflicts about reaching your goals? I want you to, I support you to, I invite you to. And again, there are three options, three options here to keep, to go deeper if that's what you'd like. Uh, let's see, share and, and, and Leah, am I missing anything? Is there anything that I've forgotten to say or need to say to our wonderful group here, our live stream, stream group on YouTube? No, you've done fabulous, Carol. We're all done. All right, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I hope you uh, uh, see, your, see your way to buying one of those programs if that could help you. So appreciate it. Thanks, ladies, for helping us.